Yeah. So my presentation um, uh, focused on um, uh, establishing online course quality and uh, what are some of the quality criteria that we can that we can look at. So organizations like this one, the Online Learning Consortium, Quality Matters, uh, INACOL, are all organizations or, or institutions that have outlined areas of quality that uh, define uh, online education. And so from that, um, individual institutions can, can take um, uh, build a framework and say uh, align it with their mission, align it with their goals and um, provide a, um, a way of thinking about addressing quality in online courses that would extend to the program as well to the, the online education at large um, to, at, of the institution. So quality uh, is defined in a variety of ways, but we're always concerned about the student, student learning, and does the student have uh, an experience in the virtual or online environment that contributes to learning. And uh, several, several areas of quality that we looked at today in, in my presentation had to do with um, assessment. Are there opportunities for students to be assessed not just through quizzes or just through um, final exams, but are there other ways by which students can express their learning? Um, the navigation and design of an online course, is it such that a student can easily uh, and quickly find the information that they need to read, that they need to listen to, that they need to watch? and then respond to the entire setup of the course. Are the materials of, of quality, or is it just text-based, or is there media involved? So these would be some of the parameters uh, around which um, online course quality is defined. From that, I discussed um, the development of a rubric or a scoring tool, if you will. It could also be a checklist that could be utilized to help define at, at the more um, detailed level, what, what does it look like? What does an assignment look like or the, are the assignments in a course if they reach a, a certain standard of quality? Yeah. More increasingly in the United States, um, institutions are, are um, pressured to demonstrate um, that their programs uh, are of quality for accreditation purposes. And so, um, and not just individual courses, but entire programs, that systems, that systems are in place to ensure institution-wide um, that programs are assessed, that students have the learning experience and are learning, and especially when uh, so much of um, the federal financial aid that comes to students is, is coming from the federal government. And so um, there, um, there is definitely a push from the accreditation perspective. So to, to align um, quality standards of a course to learning outcomes, I, I think, I think is, a, is an essential connection. And, and so it's important to have, uh, to have metrics of uh, student success rate, of good quality uh, courses that can, be, that can be aligned to standards. Um, I personally have not done, con conducted such a study, but um, if the, if if an institution wishes to offer online, online courses, I think those are metrics that uh, are important to establish. Clear criteria for quality in online courses, and then also data that is being collected on student success rate within a course, um, student um, assessment data on, on how close 
or how are students doing on a certain learning objective within a course, and then take that data and see if there are any relationships. I think the perception often is that, that there is more scrutiny on online courses than there is in a face-to-face -face course. The reason for that, or the, the history, uh, comes from institutions having to make a case for offering online courses in addition to traditional courses. And um, when, in fact, there are many cases where online education, where, where online courses are actually better designed than a face-to-face -face course because they have gone or undergone more, more scrutiny. So uh, I think in terms of learning principles, they ought to apply in a face-to-face -face or online course. Whether that actually happens, I'm not, I'm not sure. But there are studies being done that look at, at, at especially retention. I think uh, retaining students in a program and how does that correlate with good design of a course?